Hello and welcome back to Around the Block. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to two really difficult games coming up against Dunstrader and Sloven Bratislava. I don't know how we keep doing it, but we keep winning games and we find ourselves in an incredible position in the league table, which we'll go through in just a moment's time. Let's have a quick look at the results from when you were last here, when we had that 2-1 win over Skalika and that 1-0 win over Trenton. Well, since then, we've played five games and we've won four of them, starting off with a 3-0 win over Nitra. Thomas Brigant, Gunnarsson and Palevka scoring the goals in that one. Gunnarsson and Palevka scoring in the 90th minute plus, so good stuff there for us. We then beat Samarin in the Slovak Cup third round, but had to go to penalties against the second division side. We put out quite a young lineup as you can see behind my head uh, quite a young lineup people like Patrick Davinsky Gompi Hartmanov uh, Tomovsky Rychenko playing in that game we had to go to penalties in the end after they scored in the 90th minute of regular time. Luckily, we won penalties though, so we find ourselves in the quarterfinals. Next up, we had a really good 1-0 victory over Michael of there. Tyson Furman picking up the goal in that one. Really good to see him get himself on the score sheet, the young striker, and a good win for us in a game where we got dominated, really. 19 shots to 9 shots, and yet we got the win there. That was really, really impressive. And we followed up with another good win against Seneca with Nagy and Barbosa getting the goals in that one before they rather a surprising 1-1 draw with Zlate. Uh, Barai scored in the 81st minute in a game against the team that are near the bottom of the table, but they, they dominated us. They were much better than us in that game. We got lucky to get a point in that game. So I think overall we've played really well, apart from perhaps that game against Zlate where we didn't do great. But for the most part, we've done fantastically well. And we find ourselves second in the table, lads. I can't quite believe this is happening. Second in the table, four points clear of Zilina, who are just below us in the table as well. With three points off Slovan Bratislava, although they have got two games in hand on us. So I'm sure that they'll fire themselves off into the distance at the top of the table very, very soon. But we find ourselves in an incredible position. Now, today we are playing Sloven Bratislava, so I do expect us to lose that game, but we may stand a chance against Dunstrader, and that may keep us in second place come the end of today's episode, which is ridiculous. Because of all this, we're actually 14 points clear of seventh, which is bizarre when you think about it. And considering that we are very close now to that split in the league, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six more league games. I cannot really see a position where we drop down into the bottom half of the table now. So I think once the league splits in half, if we look at the rules of the league, we're going to be in this championship group fighting for either direct qualification into Europe or a European playoff place and hopefully going on to win the European playoffs if we have to drop down to that. It's fantastic. We have had an absolutely quality season. Looking at the, uh, the season preview, like we are a thousand to one to win the league and yet here we are doing a Leicester City pretty much. I'm not entirely sure how we keep up with it all. I think it's the, we keep swapping between that five at the back and the four at the back sort of system that we use. I think that's keeping teams on their toes a little bit. We're going to use a five at the back system against both Dunstrader and Sloven Bratislava today. I think that's the best way to go for it against these two really good sides who have got the biggest budgets in the league. But I'm just, I'm just over the moon with it all. Just over the moon with it all completely. So for this first game then against Dunstrader, uh, we've got Lesnovsky in goal as per usual with a back three of Filipak, Direk and Maxim. Uh, Tim, Kontar and Gunnarsson make up the defence midfield with Nag and Cena in the midfield. Barbosa and Furman are going to be starting up front. Furman has been playing well when he does get some chances. Uh, he's made five appearances now, two goals. Pretty good return from the young. Is he 16 still, Tyson? 17 years old now. He's doing all right for himself. Right then, kickoff is upon us here today. Hopefully, we just continue the form we've been doing. Just, you know, keep playing well. Hold done straighter to a draw or maybe nick a win like we did in the last episode against uh, Trentson, something like that. And I think we could be pretty golden. So far, we're doing quite a good job of keeping this game nice and boring with only two shots in the entire game, both of them for Dunstraders. We managed to clear their attempt to come forward there as Tyson Firma now under a bit of pressure, playing it back towards Gunnarsson, who plays it back in towards Tyson, who can put a ball in the middle, waiting for the uh, players there. Nagy down to Barbosa, Barbosa to Nagy, who scores the opening goal of today's game. And this works so well with formation at the moment. It works really, really well. I'm really happy with it. Come on, Tyson. Great ball across there. Really good to drag some opposition out of the way there completely as Nagy heads it down to Barbosa, back to Nagy and shoots on his left foot. Keeper just out of position. Maybe a bit late seeing it because lots of uh, defenders in the way. But a great goal for us. You love to see it. And this is what we've been doing so well all season. We just seem to be able to get some good like 1-0 results. We, we've done that a couple of times, getting some decent 1-0s. This time, maybe not going to be a 1-0 victory for us as Dunstrader score from a set piece there. But this is what we've been doing so well. We defend really well against the big teams and we can just nick a goal here and then. And it's just kept working for us all season. I think if we 
you know, restarted the season just completely blank, I don't know if we'd be able to do it or not. I think the form we managed to get into ourselves to do and the way we've just had lots of luck this season as well, I don't know if we'd be able to re- re- just do it again. Like, we're just playing so well this season. It does feel like a bit of a one-off as it looked like that. Just a bit of look like that. That header was a fantastic header and it just hits the post. This time, not getting quite so much luck there as done straight a score from another set piece, which isn't great. So maybe I need to talk... So maybe I need to stop talking about how lucky we are, because as soon as I started talking about that, they've scored two goals. Heading into the second half then, I feel like, obviously we're not creating opportunities at the moment. We got that goal, defence formation was working well, but now they've scored two, we're not creating the opportunities. And I feel like with, well, it was 25 minutes ago, maybe when we get to 70 minutes or so, we might look to just spring on that attacking formation instead, bring our wingers on the pitch instead as Maxim gets it into Contar, out towards Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson to put a cross into the middle. He does. Barbosa's there heading it just over the bar. And I think at this stage, we haven't really got anything to lose, have we? So I think we we switch it back up to this. We bring we take Kontar and Drek off. Uh, so we bring on Pelevka and we bring on Brigant. Tyson Furman can't play there too much. So we'll bring on uh, Brian instead and go a bit more attacking to finish off the game and see if we can just sneak a goal at the end to grab a draw. Come on, lads. Let's, uh, let's say, get creative out there and maybe just we can create something as Brigant's put a free kick in the middle. He gets it right into the area and it goes into the back of the net. Is it going to stand? It looks like it will. Maxim gets the goal for his third of the season and we've leveled things up with 10 or so minutes to go. And this is now where we turn the screw a little bit. We put the pressure on them. We've got nothing to lose at this stage, so let's go and really go for it. Come on. Let's go very attacking. Let's say get creative once again because I love saying that. It just always seems to work quite nicely. Into the final few minutes, a good free kick from them has gone into the back of a net. And you, oh, that's very unlucky, to be fair. Really unlucky that we've conceded that free kick right at the dying moment of the game. And to know what, it actually is very annoying that all our goals today we've conceded from set pieces. They've not had a chance from open play and yet give them three set pieces. They've got three goals. That's frustrating. We lose the game 3-2. I don't know. We couldn't do anything about that free kick at the end, I don't think. Couldn't do anything about it. If we'd gone defensive, they still got the free kick and scored, wouldn't they? I don't know. But unlucky to lose that one, really. Unlucky to lose that. I feel like we deserved a little bit better from it towards the end of the game. But great performance from the boys. First loss in six games. Always disappointing, but it was going to happen at some point. Uh, and I think we'll probably lose to Sloven Bratislava as well, unfortunately, as uh, Milhaik isn't getting the game time that he wants um, and he maybe wants to get it sorted out. Well, Shitty Gel, talk to him first, please, lad. And he dropped his lack of football concern. That's not a matter for me anymore. Ah, friendly invitations are being accepted, which must mean that the winter break comes just after the Sloven Bratislava game. Interesting. Now, what this means is, uh, obviously, a bit of a long time off for competitive fixtures, but it also means January transfer window and a chance to maybe address the nearly half a million pounds in the hole that we're currently in. If we sort the squad by value, we do have a fair few players with a bit of value to them, okay? Now, obviously, Maxim's on loan. We can't sell him, unfortunately, but Pelevka's been really good for us this season, and no wonder why, you know, his value's rocketed up a little bit, 78k. If we got a bid of, like, 100k plus for him... He's got to go. It's, it's these kind of situations that we have to sell some players. Now, there are a few players that potentially we could look to sell because we might be able to replace, like, Contar. He's not brilliant, but he's got a bit of value to him. If we get 30k for him, something like that, he'd be gone out the door. But we've got to keep an open mind about some of these transfers because if we want to get a coaching course and we want to actually make this squad, you know, this club profitable and actually make some money, then selling players is going to have to be a part of that. Luckily for us, though, uh, Zilna played a couple of days after us and they drew with Trenton. So we're still three points clear of them and got slightly better goal difference as well. So that's quite handy for us. At least we're still three points clear. And if we lose to Slovan Bratislava and Zilna win, we're on level points of them still. So we're still in that top three. And even Slovan Bratislava are now drawing their game. So we've only dropped four points behind them now as well. But they have got two games in hand again. So they could easily go 10 points clear of us. Dunker is now getting a bit cross because he's not playing games as well. And... I don't know, maybe he's a player that we should look to try and sell in January. In fact, I mean, he's our back at right back, but he's not brilliant. And to be fair, Tim on the left-hand side is apparently better at the right back than, than Dunker is on the right-hand side. So, discuss the issue with him. Let's let's try and sell you. He wants to go out on loan. We'll say loan. If we can just get him out on loan, then we can get rid of him at the end of his contract at the end of the season. If someone else pays his wages, that saves us a bit of money as well, which is good. If we look at how much money some of these players are on, Barbosa and Barai are on a lot of money, both of them. 
and their contracts end at the end of the season. I'd quite like to keep both of them. I have just tried to renegotiate contracts with both Barbosa and Barai. Barbosa, we got very close to a, a deal on a much cheaper, well, I say much cheaper, about 750 per week, but then he rejected it last minute. I tried to squeeze it down a little bit lower, but I can offer him a new contract at some point soon. In terms of Barai, we didn't even get to the contract. He just flat out refused anything other than a star player and a big wage rise. So Barai, we might have to look to sell him. In the meantime, we've got the game against Sloven Bratislava coming up. Uh, Nagy is currently slightly injured, so we'll take him off for shitty job. But other than that, I want to leave a team as it is. Right then, kickoff is upon us. Away to Sloven Bratislava. It's a it's a big game, and they are a very very good side. Currently in the Europa League group stages, as they've opened up the scoring inside of ten minutes there with a good set piece. They are they are bottom of their or they were bottom at least I remember last time I saw it of their Europa League group. So won't be going any further in Europe, but at least they got to the group stages, which is very impressive. I've got to say considering the league we're in and the reputation of the league and stuff, it's difficult to attract players and yet they've managed to do that and do well in Europe. And that is why I don't expect this to get a win today against Slovan Bratislava. It's going to take an awful lot to actually do something pretty decent against them. Now, we actually drew... Uh, no, we drew. We lost, didn't we? We lost 1-0 to them earlier on in the season, but that was a very good result, I thought, at home. Hopefully, we can just try and do the same again today. If we just lose it 1-0, that still looks pretty good on paper to only lose 1-0. And the good thing about this defensive formation, it doesn't really give them many good chances. We've seen two, three highlights. Three, two highlights, I think. One was the goal, one was some miss, wasn't it? So we are limiting their chances, the, the quality of their chances quite nicely. They do have a lot of them, 10 shots in this first half, and but the quality of them isn't very good. And so we've managed to get to half time, uh, one nil down. I mean, we've not had a shot or anything like that. I mean, it, we, we, I think the best thing we can do is just sort of defend, really, in this kind of situation, not lose by too many. The goal, we're going to lose anyway, I feel, this kind of fixture. I just don't think we're good enough to beat Slovan Bratislava. But if we can get the goal difference and things like that, and the goal difference is what matters in these kind of situations. And we have dropped down to third in the table because Zilner have obviously taken the lead in their game. So they go ahead of us on, I presume it's head-to-head -head record, isn't it? So uh, they beat us, so they go ahead of us on that head-to-head -head record. But we're still level on points to them, which is a great position to be in as another good save there from our keeper. I think we do something similar. I think if we get to 20 minutes to go, we're still 1-0 down. We switch things up a little bit, go a bit more attacking. We've got nothing to lose at that stage, have we? Nothing to lose at all. And we're getting close to that 70-minute mark as Gunnarsson on a 5.8 rating is having a terrible game, but he's got to stay on the pitch because all the changes that we need to make are in the attacking midfield. So, Brigant on, uh, Polevka on, and Barai on. There we go. Come on, lads. Let's try and give ourselves a bit of a fighting chance of scoring a goal at the end of the game. We've kept it 1-0 for quite a long time, really limiting the chances that Slovan Bratislava can have. Unfortunately, I don't think doing this has really helped us out massively. Uh, we've had two shots, and I think we had those before we changed formation, actually, so it's not looking brilliant. As the clock ticks down, I think it's going to be another 1-0 loss, unless we can do something magical from this free kick. Come on, Brigant. Put this in the top corner. He only has gone and done it. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant to score such a late goal there. What a free kick. Let's quickly go to, like cautious and and things like that just just defends oh lads there's a there's a highlight now you can see it happening can't you goes out for a corner okay come on defend this and we should be picking up a point here today come on you love to see it and oh, it's gone over the bar but picking up a point against Slovan Bratislava is not easy at all not many clubs have done it and yet we have to stay second in the table to stay four points behind them you love to see it. Did not expect that coming into that game. Did not expect that at all. But to get a loss and a draw out of today's episode against the teams that we've played against, I think that's pretty decent. So we've got an 11-point gap to 7th, and there's four games to go, so that's 12 points available. All we have to do is pick up one more point, and we are safely going to be in the top half of the table this season, which is phenomenal. You know what? At this stage, at this stage, I think we try and make our target third. I mean... We've shown that we are capable. We, I mean, we've done so well in terms of form. You never know when the form's going to change or a bit of morale drops and we start losing games. But at this stage, I think we try and we try and target third in the table. Or maybe rephrase it, try and target automatic qualification into Europe for next season rather than going for fourth to seventh to get in that European playoff to maybe potentially get a place in European football next season. Challenge first, second or third. Target that to try and get automatic qualification. So that is the end of today's episode. I think what I'm going to do then is come back for the Zillina game because that would be quite interesting. And then that's when we have the split and we'll play the first game after that split in the season, which I think will be quite interesting. 
interesting. So expect to see a couple changes maybe in the squad over January transfer window. I'm, I'm in two minds about it because we need to maybe sell some players to make some money and get some players on some new contracts. But if we want to stay where we are, we maybe need to bring in some players as well. And that's spending more money that we don't have just yet. But if we do get the money, get into Europe, that oh, makes it better. Oh, it's so difficult to know what to do, but expect some changes at least. So thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, please do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.